Welcome to Rio Bamba. Rio Bamba, Ecuador. That's right, we're still in Ecuador, but we're in a new city in Rio Bamba. And we're actually standing on the roof of the building where we're staying, our Airbnb. It's right here. Right in this little uh, suite up on the roof, like a pigeon in a pigeon coop. But it's a beautiful, beautiful view of the mountains and the distance and the city. And actually, right out there, behind those clouds, there is uh, the tallest mountain in Ecuador, Chamborazo. And uh, we may actually never be able to see it while we're here, because unfortunately we're here during the rainy season. Today, the sky is blue and the clouds have cleared here in the morning, but the weather report forecast for like the entire time that we're staying here is basically rain and cloudy. Uh, so, we may never actually get to see Chamborazo with our own eyes. I hope we do, uh, but if not, I'll cut in a, uh, a beautiful photo that someone else took during the sunny season, and uh, you'll get to see it. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right. Back to the video. So we have a nice clear view now. And you can see if you look all the way around, the city is just surrounded by mountains. So the city actually sits in a valley, the uh, Chim Chimbo River Valley. And it's basically pretty much the same as a lot of cities in, uh, in Ecuador. You can see the mountains back at the distance there. See all this like from the roof of our Airbnb. But uh, because it's all mountainous up here, you have to find a river valley in order to make a settlement. It's the same thing you see in Cuenca with the four rivers that run through Cuenca. You find a river valley, nice flat area in amongst all the mountains, and you can create a settlement here which is exactly why there's been settlements here for, you know, thousands of years, long before the Spanish arrived, before the Inca were even settled here. There were other civilizations. Get some beautiful views. And of course, like we said at the beginning of the video, <laughs> you can't, can't see the uh, Chimborazo, Chimborazo vol volcano. I really would like to see it but it's hidden behind the clouds. We'll keep coming up here. I'm gonna come out here basically every day and see if we can see that volcano. And hopefully, one of these days while we're here in Rio Bamba, we'll be able to see it. All right, so we got it. A view of the mountain, Chimborazo during the day. There it is. You can see the top, you can see the snow. The clouds have parted, it's a nice, uh, well, at least for now. <laughs> it's a nice, sunny part of the day. Very beautiful. Chimborazo. There it is again, Mount Chimborazo. Finally got a good view. We're not here for very long, and uh, it's been raining most of the time, but the clouds have parted. Got a nice view. That mountain is uh, not the tallest mountain in the world. It's the tallest mountain in Ecuador. Um, but it is actually the peak, because it sits on the equator, because the Earth is spinning at the equator, uh, it's actually farther away from the center of the Earth than at the pole. So even though it's not the tallest mountain above sea level, that mountain at the peak is the farthest point away from the center of the Earth on the entire earth. So, pretty cool. Anyway, today I think we're gonna go out, since it's a nice day, at least in the morning, it's supposed to be sunny with no rain. We're gonna go out and explore the city a little bit of Rio Bamba. And I wanna check out three parks that uh, are sort of right in the center of the city of Rio Bamba and have some really cool old landmarks. And there's some cool history to go along with the parks. We'll talk a little bit more 
about the amazing city of Riobamba and its history just briefly in our first video here and uh, hopefully hopefully we'll learn a little something anyway let's go all right so we're here at Plaza Sucre which is like the center center plaza of uh, of Riobamba you can see it right here behind me Plaza Sucre really beautiful plaza there's a fountain in the middle, the fountain of Neptune. And across the way, that like large, neoclassical, awesome, big green building is the Colegio Nacional Maldonado. The National College, Maldonado National College. It's named after uh, Pedro Vicente Maldonado, who uh, actually has his own plaza just uh, a couple blocks away. There's another plaza here. Uh, Parque Maldonado. It's named after him. He's a very important figure here in Rio Bamba and we're gonna go over to that plaza and we're gonna learn a lot more about him but first we can take a look around here in Parque Sucre which of course Parque Sucre named after Antonio Jose Sucre the uh, Venezuelan marshal and general liberator uh, military man of the Army of Gran Colombia who was uh, in integral to uh, the independence of Ecuador so there's a lot of things named after Sucre around here in Ecuador this beautiful fountain here so Rio Bamba is known as the uh, city of firsts uh, of Ecuador basically because it was like the first Spanish city founded here in Ecuador in like 1534, 1524, way back, way back when. I'll put the right date in the subtitles, of course, but founded way, way back when. Of course, before the Spanish, the Inca were here and they settled and before the Inca, uh, there was a civilization called the uh, Puruja. So there's a long history of settlement here. The, the interesting thing though, about this city is uh, it's actually not in the same place that it was when it was originally settled. It's a few kilometers away from where it was originally settled because, um, well, there was an earthquake. So the story is very similar to uh, like Mendoza in Argentina. There was an earthquake in Mendoza that destroyed basically the entire city and uh, they had to rebuild the whole city. Same thing happened here. There was an earthquake in 1797 that destroyed pretty much the entire city and they had to rebuild it in the 1800s. So a lot of the like really, really old architecture from back before in the 1700s and the 1600s and 1500s, like all of that's gone, it's been destroyed. But uh, there is some beautiful like uh, architecture from the 1800s, like of course the uh, Colegio Nacional Maldonado, which I think is from like the late 1800s. This plaza actually here is from the 1900s and it was actually designed by an Italian architect, uh, Antonio Russo, I think his name was. And uh, this was uh, 1924 when the plaza was inaugurated in November, November 11th, 1924. November 11th is the date of... Uh, the independence of Rio Bamba, which declared independence from Spain uh, in 1820, November 11th, 1820, right around the same time as Cuenca. If you've seen our video about the uh, Republic of Cuenca and the independence of Ecuador, they did the same thing here. Basically, they declared independence as a like an inde an independent city state, basically, and then were almost immediately uh, uh, like attacked and repressed by the Spanish who came in here and like laid down the law. Um, eventually uh, Antonio Jose de Sucre and the army of Gran Colombia made their way down here and liberated the whole area from the Spanish. So of course same thing that happened in Cuenca basically but that's why this plaza is named after him. Sucre. Plaza Sucre. But like I said, this uh, plaza inaugurated in uh, 1924, November 11th. So actually it's almost 100 years old. 
and a few months from now in, uh, in November they'll probably be having a giant celebration here uh, for the 100th anniversary of the plaza hopefully we'll see we won't be here then but you know who knows maybe we'll maybe we'll hear news about that anyway I think we're gonna head a few blocks over and we're gonna check out uh, Parque Maldonado named after uh, Pedro Vicente Maldonado because he's a very important guy here he's a very important guy here in uh, in um, Rio Bamba and he also just like had a really really interesting life honestly um, so let's go let's go over there and check it out so we're here at Parque Maldonado Parque Maldonado and there's the man right there Pedro Vicente Maldonado there he is up on top of this big pillar and this statue right there way way up there so why is this guy so important well <laughs> this guy lived a life man uh, I'll tell you he was born in 1704 and he died in 1748 I think I think he was 43 years old when he died so we're gonna go like lightning round on the uh, the life of Pedro V Maldonado and uh, if you want to feel real shitty about your own life accomplishments well this is this is what's gonna do it so he was born in 1704 when he was 14 years old now he was born just so you know like into a basically aristocratic almost like a royal family um, the Maldonado name is like very very famous here in uh, in Ecuador he his like genealogy one of his one of his ancestors in Maldonado was like one of the first Marquis de uh, of the royal court of Quito right which is like what Ecuador was called into the Spanish so the guy was definitely born into privilege but when he was 14 years old he uh, went to Quito from Riobamba and he studied at the uh, uh, College of San Luis Colegio San Luis which is like a Jesuit college the Jesuits of course like super active in uh, education and uh, founding colleges here in like South America we learned a lot about that in um, the two videos that we made about the Jesuits in Cordoba in Argentina there's links to those videos down in the description um, but he uh, <laughs> so he went there when he was 14 and he studied Latin and uh, mathematics uh, geometry he studied uh, astronomy and physics and all kinds of things for three years when he was uh, well less than three years really like two and a half years and he graduated and got his teaching degree when he was 16 years old and started teaching uh, by the time he was 20 years old he had moved back to Rio Bamba and was elected mayor of Rio Bamba at 20 years old Later that year, when he was still 20 years old, he presented a proposal to the Viceroy of Peru. He was received by the Viceroy of Peru, and he presented a proposal to connect the uh, royal audience of Quito, which is what Ecuador was called at the time, to Panama via like a trade and commerce route. Later in the, ninth, or in the 17th, 1730s and 1740s, he eventually became governor of Esmeraldas province and he in the later part of his life traveled all around Europe when he visited Spain in 1746 he was received by King Philip V and given a royal title uh, he visited France and was inducted into like a scientific society in France same thing in England he went to London and was going to be inducted into uh, like a royal society of science in uh, in London but he died unfortunately and his remains are actually uh, like entombed in Piccadilly in London so if you're ever in London and you go to Piccadilly you can see the remains of this guy Pedro Vicente Maldonado very very interesting dude and of course was born right here in Rio Bamba, which is why so much stuff is named after him. This square, Parque Maldonado, named after him, and uh, also the college, National College Maldonado. 
which uh, I think actually is uh, is over 100 years old. I think the uh, the uh, centenario, right, the 100th anniversary, was back in like the 1960s. So getting on, you know, over 150 years that that, uh, that college has been here teaching students uh, here in uh, Rio Bamba in Ecuador. Anyway, very famous. And this is a beautiful little square here with many, many pigeons, some street vendors. It's beautiful architecture all around, old architecture. And right across the way here, there is the uh, Catedral de Rio Bamba or the Catedral de San Pedro. And there's something going on here today. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I was gonna try and go in there, but since they're having some sort of an event uh, here, I'm not sure what. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna try to go in there. Maybe we'll try and go in on another day and we'll see what it looks like inside But this cathedral actually is uh, One of the older cathedrals here in Rio Bamba and actually um, Rio Bamba like we mentioned before most of the city was destroyed in 1797 in the earthquake um, similar to in Mendoza in Argentina, but this cathedral actually was here on this site and was damaged but was able to be restored in like the 1800s after the uh, after the earthquake, so it was restored in the style that it was, um, you know, before the earthquake when it was built back in like I think the 1600s. So it still retains that old style. Very beautiful, uh, very very simple. It's not like a one of the gigantic, huge, um, you know, towering cathedrals like we've seen in some of the other cities, um, but it is very very beautiful and I like that it maintains the old style architecture whatever was going on in there I think is like sort of cleared up there's no longer a uh, like a speech no one's given a speech but there's still people milling around out here we may be able to get in there you know what I'm gonna try I'm gonna see if we can get in and just film real quickly and real quietly inside and see maybe uh, if, if we can. If not, we'll try and come back some other day and do it. Because I really want to see inside this church. Well, tried to go into the cathedral and it's locked up. So, closed. We'll come back. We'll come back and try and get in there and see inside. I was able to peer through the window in the door and it uh, looked pretty nice in there. It's very simple. Not like, like I said, not so like grand and ornate as some of the other cathedrals we've seen. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's like simple. Very, very nice looking inside. So maybe sometime we'll try and come back and see that. Anyway, now we're gonna head a couple blocks down to Parque Libertad, which is uh, a park, another park here in sort of the central area of, uh, of uh, Rio Bamba. Let's go check it out. So this is Parque La Libertad, and it's a few blocks away from Parque Maldonado, and uh, this, of course, is, was uh, is dedicated to like the, uh, the independence of um, of Rio Bamba here, and actually, it was inaugurated November 11th, 1920, on the 100th anniversary of the uh, Declaration of Independence of um, of Rio Bamba from the Spanish, and so that's why it's called Parque La Libertad. Now, unfortunately, the park is a little bit run down. I've done uh, a little bit of research as to why this is, and I think what happened was back in uh, October of 2023, the city started a project to replace all the like stone walkways. You can see where all the dirt is, is where the stone walkways used to be. Um, and they dug all up all the stone walkways, and I think from what I've researched, the project was supposed to only take 90 days to replace all the stone with like new stone. And, uh, Something, something went wrong. They either ran out of funding or something happened, but it looks like it's taking longer than it was going to take, uh, which is a shame because it is a really nice park, um, but it is like looking a little bit run down because of the, uh, the, you know, the dirt paths and the stone being dug up. In the middle, here in the middle of the park, is a uh, statue of Juan de Velasco who was like the first historian of, uh, the first historian of Ecuador. He's a Jesuit and uh, very important figure here in, um, in Ecuador, in Rio Bamba. There he is right there. 
And if you go across the park, there's this church over here. And this is the church of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. El Corazón Sagrado de Jesús. But this church is really interesting because, one, you can see the tower, like, from different places uh, along the skyline. When we're up on the roof of our Airbnb, we can actually see the top of this church. And it's really interesting because it's in neoclassical style, which is, of course, like new, but made to look old. When I say new, of course, this is like over a hundred years old, right? Like it was finished, the construction was finished in 1915. So it's over a hundred years old, but I mean, something that's just a hundred years old in South America is actually quite new. So the interesting thing about it is it's a uh, circular, which is like something very, very interesting for, uh, for churches in this area. Most of the churches, the cathedrals, they follow the classic style of, if you look at it from the top, the floor plan, it looks like a cross, right? It has like the nave all the way at one end of the cross and the two, um, you know, uh, like the sections of the cross, the, all the pews are in like the long part of the cross. Um, and all the ca cathedrals that we've seen so far kind of like designed that way, but this one is different. So it's a, sort of a revolutionary architectural design. And uh, unfortunately it looks like it's locked up, so we can't get in there today and see inside. Maybe, maybe one of these days while we're here in Rio Bamba, we can get in and see inside. But um, like I said, Parque Libertad. Looks like it could end up being a really nice park again um, if they uh, can get the, get the paths fixed. I don't know exactly if or when that's gonna happen. Hopefully it happens soon, but did want to come here and see this. Uh, and I think we're gonna head back over to Parque Maldonado and uh, we can wrap up the video. Parque Maldonado. Here's a view on the other side of the, of the statue here. Really nice, nice little park. And uh, I would say it's not as, uh, not as like, uh, you know, massive and popular and, uh, um, you know, central is Parque Sucre. Parque Sucre is really sort of like the the main gathering park for uh, the city. And uh, it's a lot nicer than Parque Libertad. Parque Libertad, I hope that one day uh, they uh, they fix that up and they get the tiles in, you know, uh, the, the pathways in because right now it's just kind of like a little muddy and it's kind of sad because it's got that nice church and uh, it also is, you know, a park dedicated to the uh, the independence, the independence of Ecuador, or of uh, well, the independence of Ecuador, but also just the uh, the independence of Rio Bamba in 1820, November 11th, 1820. Anyway, I think it was nice to see these parks. It's nice to see the uh, the architecture and like the beautiful old architecture of the church like this, and uh, it's just a taste of what we're going to see here in Rio Bamba. Now we're only going to be here for a short time compared to like some of the other cities where we've been staying. Um, but I do want to try to make some videos here from Rio Bamba because it's a very interesting city. Like I mentioned, the city of firsts in Ecuador. And uh, we're going to see a lot more. So stick around for that. We'll see you in the next one.